hard to say the things you want to say the most. Find a little bit of steady as I get close. Find a balance in the middle of the chaos. Send me love, send me eyes, send me never, send me Ralph breaks the internet for the first time since Fantasia 2000 back in, well, 2000. Walt Disney Animation Studios created a legitimate sequel to one of their previous films, which in this case is their 2012 Wreck-It Ralph. If I could take a moment to look back on that film, while it may not have been the Who Frame Roger Rabbit of video games that the marketing led us to think, it still ended up being a very well-crafted movie with strong animation and a lot of heartfelt moments. It really was the movie that brought Disney into the modern age. However, it is important to note that this is a rare occasion that Disney would deliver a follow-up. Unlike other studios that make sequels for the sake of capitalizing on a movie's success, Disney is known for having an oath to only make a sequel if the filmmakers got an amazing idea for a story involving their old characters. So now that they took Ralph and Vanellope and put them in the world of the internet, is the idea as amazing as they thought it would be? Or should Disney go and clear its history after this one? Let's find out. The Story As the movie begins by bringing audiences back to Litwax's arcade, the story would, at first, seem a bit underwhelming. It begins with this narrative that the steering wheel for Sugar Rush got broken, and it's up to Ralph and Vanellope to go to the internet to make some money to buy a new wheel on eBay and save the console from being permanently broken. This get the money for the gold tale is such a tiresome plotline that's been used many times before, and this one would go on the same beat as all the others, giving it some dull predictability. On top of that, it would also hint that there would be a side plot with Fixit Felix and Calhoun, but the movie would completely forget about it, resulting in those characters for their appearances to almost count as a cameo. However, even with its issues, that doesn't mean that this movie isn't full of surprises. Believe it or not, that old plot only covers the first half of the movie. Keep in mind that the internet is a real big world that has so much to explore than just Ralph and Vanellope achieving their goal. Holy cow! Look at all this stuff. Whoa, this is the most beautiful miracle I've ever seen. By the second half, it would make a smooth transition to really get into the heart of the movie and its message, which is the friendship between the two main characters. While there is no legit villain here, the antagonist would be Ralph's dependence on Vanellope, and how one's need for another can result in becoming toxic. It not only works very well on its own and explains it in a thought-provoking manner, but it allows the film to stay true as a Wreck-It Ralph sequel, since that can debatably be the core of the first film as well. Also, there would be some subtle commentary regarding internet culture, as it could also be a dangerous and mean-spirited place as much as it is amazing to go around. This would have to be one of the most deceiving stories put into a movie. It may have a pretty weak start, but it would later become a lot more heartfelt, deep, and quite engaging. The Animation Maybe this is not the first time that audiences would enter into the animated world of the internet, but this would easily be one of the best interpretations. One of the biggest strengths of Wreck-It Ralph was the variety in the animation. Numerous styles in the environment, all different types of designs, each group of characters having a unique way of moving with the character animation, and more. In the sequel, it does all of that and expand upon its range to explore more art styles. While all the places and characters would be different from one another, one consistent visual effect that is prominent throughout the whole feature is the amount of detail. The way it would create large worlds in order to present the movie in a massive scale, yet implement so many little things into it to make the places around the characters feel like a living and functioning world. A great example of this use is the main internet hub and Oh My Disney. While there are many recognizable properties featured like Star Wars, The Muppets, and Marvel at Disney, or Google, Amazon, and YouTube on the web, they're only used to enhance the backgrounds and not be in the forefront in order to avoid the movie looking like a shameless sellout advertising them. Maybe there are a couple that would have a significance to the plot like the Disney princesses and eBay, 
But the sites that are highlighted are the made up ones like the game Slaughter Race, the search engine knows more, and BuzzTube. The most unrealistic thing that this movie made up because it presents itself as a successful YouTube competitor. What'd you say your name was? Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph. Well, Wreck-It Ralph, you are trending and these are for you. Heart, 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 yes, heart. heart. At the same time, the details can also develop onto the way the characters look and come alive in the film. Some can have more realistic designs like the slaughter race characters or the people in the real world. Some can have more limited movements with a lower frame rate like the people's internet avatars. And others can be a little more energetic like Vanellope, Ralph, and Yes. There is just so much to cover in the animation because the movie does so much. Yet it manages to succeed in making something that looks so awe-inspiring because the team at Disney would make this animation and the details in it really big both in quantity and in quality. The Characters Some may have noticed this by looking into either the trailers or even from one of the posters, the movie presents an entirely huge cast. However, there are only two main characters that it would prominently present. The first, of course, being Ralph. In a way, his character development would have a lot of parallels to the story's structure. At first, he would seem one-dimensional and even a bit obnoxious by being this dumb strong guy who wants to be a good friend. But as the movie progresses, that dull archetype would become more useful and his character arc would give him more layers. Since the core of the feature would be about friendship and the toxicity of dependence, Ralph would be like the personification of the movie's message and would only become stronger as it would get closer to the climax. The other main character here would be Vanellope, who is a lot more of a complex soul searcher than a smart aleck comic relief that she was in the first movie. The film would start her off as the one that needs the most help since she's now homeless with her game being broken, but she would later learn about what is her true need. It's not that she wants her home so that she can get back to racing, she just wants some unpredictability in her life, not knowing what can happen next when she drives and takes some time away from running around the same tracks at Sugar Rush. As for all the other secondary characters, while they do play a part in the plot, their screen time is very limited in order to give a lot of room for both Ralph and Vanellope. It can be a curse to some, like how I already mentioned with Felix and Calhoun, reducing their part to becoming nearly pointless, but others would help out in progressing the plot to lead the film in the right direction, like Nosemore to literally do that, Spamly, a living pop-up ad with a shady background, or Yes, who helps Ralph become a viral sensation. There are also other characters that would play a key role in Vanellope's search for her deep belonging, like Shank being the cool leader of Slaughter Race, and I'll just say now that whatever expectation you would have for the Disney princesses, forget it because their appearances are most likely better than what you'd hope for. Do people assume all your problems got solved because a big strong man showed up? Yes! What is up with that? She, she is, is a princess! princess. It may have a bit of a case that the movie handled more characters than it could, but they, both old and new, can all deliver a good time for audiences. For a studio that rarely makes any sequels, they did quite a good job with this one. Ralph Breaks the Internet is a well-crafted successor to the original Wrecked Ralph that can have a bit of issues with the writing on the first half and might have too many characters to handle all at once, but still manages to break out strong with a deep message about friendship, an enjoyable and pretty accurate portrayal of the internet, and some amazing animation. This movie is definitely a fun watch for anyone, but my best recommendation is to watch it with friends or even with your best friend. The message will leave a stronger impact if your buddy is there to experience it with you. Also, the need to watch the first movie is honestly optional since it doesn't depend all that much on context from what happened before. Maybe it won't leave the strongest impact as a Disney movie, but it'll leave you feeling happy and satisfied as a well-made meme.
did you? Ah, the internet's very intuitive. 